clinical psychology as well. And, uh, um, and so mine is clinical so that we actually go in. Do you specialize uh, in a particular uh, area of counseling or what? Well, you know, uh, multicultural community clinical. That was my emphasis area. And you would break that down for I'll me. I'll bring it down. <laughs> <laughs> you must break that down to me. Uh, people of color, non-white. Uh, I don't use the term minorities anymore. And in any particular lecture that I'm doing, there's, I, I, I say there is no such thing as a minority. It, just the label alone has a sort of self-fulfilling prophecy that only results in inferiority. Mm. If there is a minority, there has to be a majority. And I don't know anybody in America or any other place in the world where majority doesn't rule. Okay. And if you got a chance to be on which side, which side are you choosing? Majority. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So we all are here. When we're talking about the brain, the limbic system, the, the prefrontal cortex where your thoughts and planning and all of these things are, uh, there isn't a Latino one, a black one, a white one. There isn't one more superior. Mm -hmm. The hypothalamus is that, but then there's the thalamus. Mm -hmm. You know, so in that sense, you might have some hierarchy there. But when we think about it as far as the human species is concerned, this is a silly notion. And I, I mean, do away with that. Do away with that. And so the multicultural aspect, uh, how, what do you get into when you get into that vein? Mm -hmm. Well, because we're no longer looking at uh, this Eurocentric thought system of white people mm -hmm. being the uh, gold standard anymore. Okay. It's in the American Psychological Association. I'm studying it right now. Uh, that we've moved into, the world is very multifaceted, it's multicultural. First of all, people of color, non-white, outnumber anyway. Mm -hmm. Where we ever got this notion you know, to create this sort of casting class based on color. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's unfair even to Caucasians. Mm -hmm. What about Caucasian? What about white German, mm -hmm. white Italian, mm -hmm. uh, white Polish, white Irish? Those are all different cultures with their own specific customs. Mm -hmm. You come to America, we acculturate mm -hmm. or you assimilate. They decided to assimilate, and what you end up with is this is going to be the gold standard, but it's not that way anymore. Mm -hmm. It's black, it's, it's white, it's Latino, it's Pacific Islander, it's Vietnamese, it's Chinese, it's Japanese. We all come together, and we don't have to minimize our culture in order to still be in the majority. Baby, we all are in the majority. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? I understand what yeah, you're saying. Yeah, we're all in the majority. I understand what you're saying. Yeah. Um, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, jumping tracks again. How can these people, entertainers, uh, sports figures, actors, musicians, secular and gospel, <laughs> you feel me? I feel you. How can they be the answer to so many people on a stage where people will risk not paying their rent on time, mm -hmm. buy a new outfit just to go see you, mm -hmm. hear you sing, mm -hmm. watch you play? Mm -hmm. You have all these answers for everybody on stage and off stage. Your life's a mess. Total mess. You're living in a million dollar slum. Mm -hmm. I didn't understand how that could happen. Wow, a million dollar slum. A million dollar, hell has many mansions too. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's deep. You know? That's deep. So uh, I didn't want to be one of those kinds of people. I really didn't. You know, and I, I, I saw, mm -hmm. so for me, psychology saved my life. Okay. I, if, I, I found myself, and I, it saved my life to a great degree. Wow, that is truly amazing that it was first a self-medication or self-help. Oh, and believe then me. Spread out, huh? Believe me, I was a mess. Mm. I was a mess. But it, it looked like it was put well together, which mirrors a lot of men. Um, but when you start to do the work, uh, you're forced to find who you really are. Mm. And... Um, Help us, Dr. Uh, Crenshaw. Why is it that men are slow about coming and getting help that professionals like yourself mm -hmm. can give? No, you know, uh -huh. because women, you know, we have a tendency, we'll come. Sure. But what's, what's happening there with men? Well, you know, first of all, we're just afraid. We are afraid to have to do the intrapsychic work and really find out who you are. I mean, let's not kid ourselves. As a black man, mm -hmm. which is how I identify first, mm -hmm. um, this is tough living here in America. Mm -hmm. It's tough living anywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have this interesting dichotomy of brilliance matched with complete and total perceived ignorance. Mm. There's no place for the soul or the spirit or the mind to sort of connect. It is, but 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 we elude it. Okay. It's it, it seemingly from ourselves, okay. and so we don't we can't figure it out, mm -hmm. and we are simply afraid of what we will find. And so. 
young black men, they're crying out. I mean, God, these bullets that we see, let me yeah. tell you, the bullets, mm -hmm. that's nothing more, these tears. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's all that is. Mm. It, 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 L.A. is riddled with, with all of this homicide, that this, the, the senior at right, L.A. High. Right, exactly. Um, more, just, just bullets, mm. tears, tears. We are, we are really a flooding city. Crying out. Huh? Yeah, and it's not, just, it's not just the blood that's spilling. It's these tears that are spilling. You know, and these, these young boys, boys to men, need all the help they can muster. And unfortunately, most of the men from all the way to the top, uh, uh, professors, musicians, actors, preachers, pastors. Uh, I've, I've seen it all, baby, I've seen it all. We're hurting and we don't know how to say help because we can't be weak, Tanya. The last thing you can be is a punk. Mm. For that wife, <laughs> who has, uh, whose marriage is in trouble. <laughs> pray, baby, pray. <laughs> <laughs> and, and she's trying to convince her husband to go to counseling. Can't do it. Okay. Oh, here, let me, here. There is no convincing people to go to counseling. Okay. Unless it's court mandated. Okay. And even still, people will fail. There's a resi and there's a resistance. Sure, there's a resistance. Even sitting there before you. It is, I mean, I, I can't tell you how many letters I've written in court as in, for uh, patients as an intern. Here is the key. You gotta be motivated to wanna do this. You know, it's interesting that those therapy that I have done in the past, particularly as an intern, uh, if you wanna stay with him and you can see he's riddled with problems, then you have to resign yourself that you're going to work on you. When you get tired, then you have another choice. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I think the failure in a marriage is that people actually stay together. Mm. So it, 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 it depends. Men are, once they come in, the floodgates open up. And I'm Dr. Crenshaw, what can that mother who has sons, because you know, we've always, we've always told mm -hmm. that a woman can't raise a man, or a woman can't raise a son. What can yeah. that mother do that doesn't have the man in her life? or the positive man in her life for her son? Well, she's got to raise him. Uh, yes, a mother, a single mother can raise a successful child, male or female, but there is an absence of what it is to see an effective man. Uh, but what she can do is, um, you got to be careful, but try to link him up with, you know, where, where's her brother? Where's her great uncle? Where's her uncle? Where's her grandfather? So that he can see that. Uh, I would say church, but it, it, that doesn't always work either. And it's an ongoing commitment. But see, that's again the problem with men. Mm -hmm. We have a difficult time committing. Mm -hmm. So she could turn her son on to this particular man and help. You know, he'll be there for a minute, but he's got a problem committing because he should have been in therapy 12 years ago. <laughs> so Help us, Lord. Yeah, so don't love him so much. Raise him, but don't love him so much. Understand that he is going to be a man. You know, the same way you're preparing that daughter, you need to cook, you need to be responsible financially, you need to prepare the guy the same way. And I understand, you know, we gotta protect our sons, that's the man child and the world is out to get him, but you cannot love him so much that you smother him in protection, because that is not real life. You know, you just answered, because uh, the question I was gonna ask you next, mm -hmm. how is it that we can not be guilty in being an enabler? Right to them and, you, yeah. and you've an, you're answering exactly. that on you. Exactly, yeah, that, that's, that's exactly what it is. Well, he would go to school, you know, demand the same thing from him. If it's A's and B's from your girl, the boy needs to be pulling that in too. He needs to be held accountable sexually. It's not okay for him to sow his wild oats and here's your daughter sitting right there. You send an incredible message to this kid that it's perfectly okay, but I understand that too because we don't want our boys to be punks. So we create this sort of hyper masculinity in them, you know, that, you know, to be rough and tough, of course, equals sexual prowess. Now AIDS is running rampant and we're sitting back scratching our heads wondering why. Mm. You know, so there is a lot, I, I understand the, the, the psychological perspective, and, but it doesn't make a lot of sense in, in some things, you know, and you're gonna have to know when to take your hands off and let your son become the man and you don't know what that feels like as a mother because you've never been a man. Mm. Mm. You don't know what that is. Help, okay. <laughs> on, 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 on.
you check in with your kids sometimes. There's nothing particularly going on. That's how you prevent things. Mm -hmm. See, had we loved our kids and had the men been in home like they should have been over the last 30, 50 years, mm -hmm. then when crack came in, it would have went right past our neighborhood. Mm -hmm. We didn't check in with our children. Mm -hmm. So we moved past what we call primary prevention. You know, we moved into secondary and tertiary. In some cases, it's, it's like a chronic illness like AIDS. It's tertiary. There is no cure for it. We're gonna make the patient as comfortable as possible until they pass on. I'm gonna tell you something, Dr. Lewis, I refuse to see black men forever sit in tertiary. It's not gonna happen, mm -mm, not on my watch. First of all, 